Hello and welcome to Unsolvable. In today's episode, we will be discussing the tragic death of Police Sergeant Terence Yakey and the believed US federal government cover-up. If you're ready, let's begin. Terence Yakey, known as Terry by his friends and family, was born in Oklahoma in 1965. He served his community as a police sergeant for the Oklahoma City Police Department, having served in the armed forces as a younger man. Many who knew him would have described him as a caring man, someone with much love to give, who would always put the needs of others before his own. The standout moment in Terry's life, the thing that most people remember him for, is the heroism he showed on April 19th, 1995, the day of the Oklahoma City bombings. The Oklahoma City bombings was a tragedy that shook the nation after taking the lives of 168 people, including 19 children. Terry, among other services, played a major role in the rescue and recovery operations following the bombing of the Mura Federal Building on April 19th, 1995. Terry was one of the very first personnel to arrive on the scene that day. He was on patrol nearby and rushed to the blast site upon hearing the explosion without any regard for his own safety. Terry is responsible for saving the lives of eight people that day. In line with his character, he put the needs of others before his own life and began pulling injured civilians from the rubble of the building following the effects of the explosion. Repeatedly hailed as a hero, Terry shied away from the attention. Police Lieutenant Joe Randall, Terry's superior, said, There are some people that like to be heroes and some that don't. Terry was not one that wanted that. In honour of his heroics and bravery, Terry was scheduled to receive the Medal of Valour from the Oklahoma City Police Department on May 11th, 1996, one year after the bombings. However, just three days before he was due to receive this honour on May 8th, Terry, according to the official report, committed suicide. His death shocked many, including those closest to him. Terry's body was discovered in a field near to his home in El Reno, 2.5 kilometers away from his abandoned, blood-soaked car. Terry's body was found mutilated with a gunshot to the side of his head. His wrists, arms and elbows were slit and he had suffered two stab wounds to either side of his neck, close to his jugular vein. There were also signs that suggested his body had been carried, such as rope burns to the neck and handcuffed bruises around the wrists. It is also worth noting that there was no evidence of alcohol found in Terry's body. Many have questioned how he would have been capable of hiking 2.5 kilometers from his car after having inflicted such injuries onto himself. Surely, he would have bled out before reaching his destination. One of the more significant observations was the gunshot wound to his head, which police reports suggested was the fatal blow. The shot was taken at a 45 degree angle pointing downwards. This was considered odd by many, since Terry would have needed to stretch 
to angle the gun in such a way. Also, according to unnamed officers who were present at the crime scene, no weapon was found at the scene initially. That was not until an FBI helicopter arrived. This piece of information will not be found on any official documents, since it would have directly contradicted the notion of a suicide. There were two common narratives of Terry Yakey's death. The official report declared Terry's death a suicide. It maintains that Terry was distraught, driven by guilt and sadness. He mutilated himself in his car before walking 2.5 kilometers through rough terrain before shooting himself to death. The police claimed Terry left no suicide note, but speculated that he was driven by guilt over his inability to save more people during the Oklahoma City bombings. The authorities also suggested a troubled family life played a part. The investigation was brief and at no point the notion of murder was pondered. Police officials pressed on with the suicide story and it received relatively little pushback from the media. The alternative narrative believed by many people, including Terry's family, question the official report of a suicide. They claim that Terry's death was a murder and local law enforcement were involved in covering it up. Their conclusion is based on the manner of Terry's death and the lack of investigation and autopsy. The family also spoke of his personality and mood leading up to his death. They said that there were no signs of despair or guilt and how he would usually talk about the future, which is not something someone contemplating suicide would usually discuss. Lieutenant Joe Randall recalls a discussion with Terry about his future in the department just two days before his death as being optimistic. He was inspiring, she said. He brought joy into the unit. Skeptics of the official police report linked the assassination of Terry Yankee to his investigation into the Oklahoma City bombing, claiming that he was silenced by the federal government in an effort to keep him from exposing their involvement in the terrorist attack. According to his family and friends, Terry became aware of something disturbing at the bomb site that day, which led him to reject the official story of the Oklahoma City bombing. Over the next year, he began a private investigation into the bombing, which resulted in finding, according to him, evidence of a cover-up of the bombing by federal agents. Terry did not reveal what he saw at the bomb site and kept the details of his investigation secret, even from his close friends and family. It is possible he wanted to keep them away from harm, knowing that the knowledge he possessed posed a threat. His family speak of the household being subjected to numerous threatening phone calls by unknown people during the month leading up to his death. Terry told his friends he was being intimidated and tailed by federal agents. The last known words Terry spoke were to his family. He said, as soon as I shake these feds that are following me, I'll be back and we will go to dinner. After Terry's death, the reports relating to his private investigation into the bombings were not found. Thus, there are only assumptions 
about what he might have discovered. It would seem that we will never know what Terry had discovered or what involvement the government played in the Oklahoma City bombings. While it may be hard to believe the conspiracy that federal agents were behind the bombings, whatever Terry had discovered must have been significant. Significant enough for them to assassinate him. And that's all for this month. If you are new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and make sure to check out our other videos.